Um, it's five o'clock in the morning and I'm just about to leave to get the train to Paris so that I can catch my flight to Manchester. Um, everyone else is asleep in bed, so it's just me and I'm just getting a few last minute emergency supplies. Uh, I can't travel without some emergency smoky Earl Grey and spode teacup and saucer. I mean, people may have teacups where I'm going, but you can't be too sure. So I'll be taking those two with me. And I just want to say thank you to Barbara for sending me these and because I, oh, because I love them. Try not to smash them before I leave. So I'm just going to get my last things packed together. Mum's going to drive me to the train station. So here goes. Should probably wrap this up if I'm going to be putting it in my bag. Don't want to get it broken before we get there. Into the bag. Hopefully, a little tea. We'll get there in one piece. Bye bye, Titi. Bye bye. Bye bye, Titi. You be good. You be good. Good girl. Oh, you good girl. Behave. <laughs> A bit dark. Forward! <laughs> right, let's just close the gate. It's still pitch black at the chateau. Goodbye, Gardener's Cottage. You can't even see it. All right. We're in the van this morning. Morning, Mum. Morning. <laughs> they can't see you, it's alright, it's pitch black. <laughs> Alright. I've arrived in Manchester safely, but I'm actually not in Manchester. I'm in a place called Stockport, which is not far from Manchester Airport. And I've met up with my friend Luke and Bilal. And uh, Luke is actually the last person that I lived with before I moved to France to the Chateau. So he's kindly uh, agreed to drive me around the Lake District for the next two days. And we've hired a car and we didn't know which car it was going to be. Uh, and it turns out it's a French car. So it's really cool. And I'm just going to show you that now. So we're going to get in the car and we're going to go straight up to the Lake District to Beatrix Potter's Cottage. And we've booked entry to get in at two o'clock. So we've got to get a move on. Because you're near it, maybe. No, the bed and the laptop. Eh? Whoa! What is that? Crystal. <laughs> that is mental. Okay. Yeah. Driving in luxury, then. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. <laughs>
to get across the lake because Beatrix Potter's house is on the other side of this um, this lake. I think it says contactless payment. Vehicle up to six or five. Yeah. But we're nearly there. So I'm really excited. Actually, our time slot to go in, into the cottage gardens is now. Um, so <laughs> we might be a bit late. Hopefully they'll still let us in. see it from here and that is the tower bank arms made famous in the pie and the patty pan book i'll show you all in a minute once we've parked up um, yeah carry on down here to the left and you can park in the sorry hotel car park i think oh, they actually do have a car park for hilltop just here but sometimes it's full if it's full though you can usually park in the um in the hotel but you'll have to go for a cup of tea there is there any room? Yeah, so yeah, this one. Yeah? Perfect. Welcome to Near Sori. This little village is the place that Beatrix Potter made her home in 1905. Using some of the money from her first few books that she had published, she was able to purchase the little farm just on the top of the hill around the corner. And um, she actually moved here um, after the death of her fiance, Norman Warren, who was actually part of the, um, the family that published her books. And looking for a place to um, call home and a place to escape London, um, a place to grieve, she um, found this little village and fell in love with it. And um, we're just going to walk around the corner now up to the cottage where she lived. Um, and it's just one of the most beautiful little villages in the Lake District. And it's just a stone's throw from Etherwaite Water, which is just over, over the hill. So let's go and have a look around. Justin Beatrix Potter's garden. This is her house. 
Wow. Now, unfortunately, the house is closed to the public at the minute, but we are allowed to look around the gardens. Wow, look, they've closed it all up. The shutters are closed. Well, I'm just stood at Beatrix Potter's front door. It's so quiet, we've got like the whole place to ourselves. There's barely anyone here. It's magic. And this, it's got a white wisteria here. This plant is a, it's a wisteria and it's a white one. Um, I just planted, uh, just before I left, I planted a white wisteria outside the, um, the front door of the, my gardener's cottage. So hopefully it will look quite similar once the uh, wisteria grows over it eventually. Well, I don't know if you can just see me uh, behind me here is this, um, this farm. So the actual cottage is actually part of a, a, a larger farm. And when Beatrix Potter purchased the place uh, the, um, at the uh, beginning of the 20th century, uh, it, the actual um, tenant farmers were still living in the cottage at the time. So what she did is she, um, she had an extension built on the back and the side. Uh, so she moved the family, that were the farmers, out into the extension and then she moved into the, the main cottage herself. So they actually lived together um, and the farm was still run as a farm. But obviously this, just, this part at the front here was just her her own personal space, like a, more of a cottage garden, but it is actually a proper farm and they still run it today. Just see up here, there's a plaque on this um, this wall. This was the actual extension that Beatrix Potter had built and it was completed in 1906. And you can see her initials, which is HBP, which is her, for Helen Beatrix Potter. That was her real name, Helen. But her, um, her public name was Beatrix. That was her middle name. So the cottage was actually much smaller when she bought it, but she had it made bigger. So this is Beatrix Potter's famous garden gate, and it's painted in a green. And you can actually buy this green paint still from a company called Little Green. And they work with the National Trust to reproduce historic paints from landmarks. Let's have a look around the garden, shall we? What has she got? Lots of rhubarb. Look at these raspberries. Wow. I won't pick them. I think that's a bit mean. <laughs> Look, little beehive there. It's a little wheelbarrow there, just tucked away. I actually think that makes an appearance in a book. I'm not sure which book. I'll have to dig it out and find it. So this is her little vegetable garden. I guess it's where she would have grown fruit and veg for herself. Um, they probably don't use it to actually eat food from these days. It's just maintained uh, to give people a sense of how it would have looked. She's got some raspberry bushes here and some alliums. Also there's artichokes there. And the view just from down here up to the cottage is absolutely stunning. There's some strawberries here. This place is so magical, can't believe it. And it's pretty much as it was um, when she died. Um, she said to the National Trust uh, that they could take it on um, but they would have to keep it open to the public and they would have to keep all of her furniture in the house as it was when she left it. Um, and they've done that, they've preserved it. And uh, 70 years, no, actually 77 years after her death, um, it is still as it was back in the day. So it's uh, all down to the National Trust for looking after it. Look at this little bird.
but this is the hilltop gift shop and i might have just gone a bit crazy in there so i'll i'll show you my uh beatrix potter haul when we get back to the car so this is the tower bank arms made famous uh in one of beatrix potter's books i'll try and find the illustration for you and see if you can uh, see if it's changed since she painted it but we're just gonna go for a drink we're a drink in here yeah yeah <laughs> might as well we're in the village mm -hmm. 